noise from a fighter plane, music from an orchestra, birds chirping, and a note from the tuning fork. Sound is produced by the vibrations of air particles. One way we can produce sound is by using a tuning fork. When the prongs are stationary, the layers of air particles are at rest. You can see that the black lines are equally spaced apart. We describe the layers of air to be in their equilibrium positions. When the prongs move outwards, the layers of air close to the prongs are pushed close together, creating a region of compression. When the prongs move inwards, the air layers are pulled apart, creating a region of rarefactions. As the prongs vibrate, a series of compressions and rarefactions of the layers of air particles is created. This series of compressions and rarefactions is the characteristics of sound waves which transfer energy to our ears. Sound waves are a form of longitudinal waves. Let's look at the particle motions in a longitudinal wave. Using a slinky as an analogy to visualize the invisible air layers, the movements of my hands represent the pushing and pulling actions of the prongs of the tuning fork to produce the sound. Each coil on the slinky represents a layer of air. When the first layer of air is pushed or pulled, it will pass on the energy to the second layer of air and this sets up a continuous vibration of the layers. A series of compressions and rarefactions is produced and the longitudinal wave is generated. Observe the vibrations of the coils of the slinky caused by the periodic vibrating force from my hand. It is parallel to the directions of the longitudinal wave motions. Let's study the motion of a single particle in a slinky. I will be using this single particle representation to model the motion of one particle in the longitudinal wave. This is how the corresponding motion of a single particle in a slinky is represented by the model. Let's study the motion of a single particle. The distance between the markings per unit time are modelled using the general waves equation. The amplitude of a periodic particle motion is the maximum displacement from equilibrium position. Period T is the time taken for the particle to travel one full cycle. Let's simulate the particle motion with period T equal to 12 seconds. Let's represent the displacement of the particle from its equilibrium position through one period in a graph now. At time t equal to 0 second, the particle is at its equilibrium position. The point is as plotted in the displacement time graph. As you observe the plotting of the graph in the next 12 seconds, take note of the actual position of the particle. Taking displacement of the particle to the right-hand side of the equilibrium position to be positive, Let's plot the points on the displacement time graph at time t equal to 1 second, t equal to 2 seconds, t equal to 3 seconds. To t equal to 12 seconds. Note that the particle is in smooth continuous motion. What do you think the graph will look like in the next 12 seconds? As you can see, the motion of the particle repeats itself in the next 12 seconds. This regular motion of the particle describes the periodic motion of a particle in a wave. You can also obtain the period and the amplitude of the wave from the displacement time graph. By looking at the motion of the particle, we can identify the positions where the particle is momentarily at rest, moving at its maximum velocity and again momentarily at rest. From the motion, what evidence indicate the velocity is at minimum or maximum? As you can see, the displacement traveled per unit time decreases as it reaches the turning point. And as the particle moves towards the next turning point, 
the displacement traveled per unit time also decreases. Hence, the particle is at momentary rest at the turning points and moving at maximum velocity at the equilibrium position. In this video, we have learned about the periodic motion of a particle in a longitudinal wave. The next time you hear a sound, try to visualize how the periodic motion of a single particle contributes to the transfer of energy in a longitudinal wave. See you in the next video on formation of longitudinal waves.